July 7th, the seventh day of Unleavened Bread, 21st of Abib. And here we go with a song from Mia. I don't know which one, though. Yeah, Mia, the Passover song. Okay. We're going to play the Passover song and uh, for bread and wine, and I thought it was fitting for today's message. I'm going to be talking about um, faith today with Randall J. Brewer, and we're going to be showing missions from Raja in India and another gentleman in Kenya that I'm trying to get used to knowing him. He's sending me newsletters, so I'm going to share his mission report as well. And then we're going to end it with Maranatha, the Lord is coming, martyrs in the last days. And so people, uh, I hope we can get something out of these messages today because we are in the end at the end. Oh my goodness. I had a phone call this morning and I got to talk to a guy I didn't even know on the phone and going to be sending him books out. It's just amazing how Yeshua bring us into these people. You know, sometimes when you get marketing calls in your household, Start witnessing to the people. Ask them, do they know the Lord? You know, ask them. You'd be surprised what they might tell you. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and play Mia. And I'm going to show you the uh, the slides from this video. And I hope that it's not too uh, echoey because I'm not going to mute it out because I don't want to have any audio problems. So I'm just going to let it play. And if it's too much for you, you can just pass it, skip through. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it.
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, wow, people. We have a wonderful, wonderful God we serve. Hallelujah. Before I get to the mission report, I'm going to let my husband read from the Bible relating to uh, what's going on here today. We have to keep thinking the Lord. You know, and I get up and I ask the Lord every morning, what do you want me to read? And he gave me Isaiah 52. And just, just see how this relates to what we just showed you on the screen. But Wow, people, we're getting ready to go home soon. Getting ready to go. Hallelujah. The title of the Lord's coming Savior. Show that title there, babe. That title. That title. The Lord's coming salvation. Hallelujah. So uh, he's going to be reading this from the Son of Man Bible version. So I'm going to let him read this. He may be Xing out on me here, but I'm going to get into the mission report here after he's done. So go ahead. Mm. Oh, let me try it. Awake, awake. Put on your strength, Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, Jerusalem, set apart city. For never again will the uncircumcised or the unclean enter you. Does that sound like a city we're looking forward to coming down from heaven, coming <laughs> out of the heavenlies? The new Jerusalem. Shake yourself off from the dust. Arise and sit, Jerusalem. Take off the chain from your neck, captive daughter of Zion. For this is what Yahuwah says. You were sold for nothing, and you will be redeemed without money. But what did it cost him? It cost him everything, of course. For this is what Sovereign Yahuwah says. In the beginning, my people went down into Egypt to live temporarily. Assyria has oppressed them recently. Now what do I have here, declares Yahuwah? Seeing that my people are taken away for nothing, those who rule over them wail, declares Yahuwah, and my name is slandered continually all day long. Therefore, my people will know my name. They will know in that day that I am the one who says, yes, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings the gospel, who announces peace, who bears good tidings, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your divine one reigns. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen, your watchmen raise their voices. Mm -hmm. Together they shout for joy, for they will see every eye of theirs, Yahuwah's return to Zion. Now, that's the day we're looking hallelujah. forward to. Yeah. Break out into joyful singing together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for Yahuwah has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Yahuwah has bared his set-apart arm in the sight of all the ethno-linguistic nations. All the earth will see the salvation of our Almighty. They're going to see it, but will they receive it? Leave, leave, go out from there. Touch nothing unclean. Leave from her midst. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of Yahuwah, for you will not go out in a rush. Nor will you leave in a panic, for Yahuwah will go before you, and the Mighty One of Israel will be your rear guard. And then it's going to go into the Isaiah 52, 53 Messiah passages. Look, my servant will act wisely. He will be high and lifted up, and he will be exalted. As many were horrified at you, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form no longer looked like anything human. Even so, my servant will sprinkle in expiation many ethno-linguistic nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For that which they had not been told, they will see, and that which they had not heard, they will understand. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's why I said we prophesy in part, know in part. You know, you're sure not going to give everybody all the answers. You know, he give me here some, he give another person some. You know, he go all around the world, he touches people, he give them some. But that's why we should pray for one another, not pick on one another, not put down one another. I just can't wait. I just can't wait till we all at the welcome table. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. So thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate it. And I'm going to get over into, uh, I got another message too. I almost forgot about. Uh, 
I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out now. And then before I go to uh, Randall J. Brewer, um, I'm going to go over here and find it uh, here. Uh, nobody wants to hear. We just talked about that, how in uh, Isaiah 52, we just mentioned it. Nobody want to hear. Nobody want to know. And so we're going to read uh, Byron Searle's new message from last night. And then I'm going to get over to uh, Missions and Randall J. Brewer. So I'll just do it that way where I won't forget about uh, Brian's, uh, Byron's message here. Nobody wants to hear. Nobody wants to hear. April 9, 2019. Matthew 13, 13 to 15. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are full of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Hallelujah. He is our healer. Hallelujah. Uh, so let the transcript here read. It says here, My son, nobody wants to hear me. Uh, any of my true prophets or watchmen, their ears are dull of hearing. So when truth is presented, they perceive it not. Many people try to put a, lot, a timeline on me. I tell you again, my time is not your time. For I know when all the events foretold will come to pass. Hallelujah. Nobody know but the Father. He say even the angels don't know. Even uh, Yeshua don't know. Only the Father know. Many people are caught up in the affairs of this world that they are blinded to my warnings and will be caught totally unaware. Many so-called self-righteous religious people call my true prophets false prophets because the warnings did not occur when they thought they should. Many of my people do not even understand the warnings given. My son, these people think they see, yet they are blind. They think they hear, but they are deaf. They think they understand, but yet they are dumb. This is my church today. They see the, they see the situations going on around the world, yet they are blind in their own city. They hear of wars and killings in various nations, yet they are deaf to the screams of the unborn. They think they understand my scriptures, yet they are dumb enough to allow false teachings hear and say into my body. My son, nobody wants to hear me, although I speak to them by my Holy Spirit. They shut me out, calling me the voice of a demon. If they cannot hear me now during a time of relative peace, how will they hear me when foreign troops are roaming their streets? How will they hear me when martial law is activated and the Noahide laws are put in place? During times of chaos and destruction, you will cry out to me, not because you have not learned to hear my voice, but you, but you will not know what to do or where to go. Absolutely, we need to hear. We need to hear the Father people. My son, who can tell me when I am returning for my bride? No one. Yet no one thinks they are going to be here for a time of testing. Do you really think my bride is ready to go now? If I came today to gather my bride, I would only be able to take 5%. The Bible is not pure, not spotless. She is full of sin. Oh, people, that's something we should look at. Like I said this week, we need to be searching ourselves, including I'm talking to me too, okay? The bride is not pure, not spotless. She is full of sin. But the testing coming will purify my bride, and then I will come take her. I love you, my people, but you must get out of the flesh and walk by the Spirit. I am coming soon, and all who know me, truly know me, will hear my voice. Amen, Messiah Yeshua. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't have my pillow behind me. I need a pillow. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just know that... Um, I just know that I uh, got to go here now over to, before I go to Raja, before I go to Raja, I'm going to go over here to, uh, okay, thank you very much, thank you very much. I'm going to go over here to uh, this praise report I got from Kenya. I was just showing you guys the map here. Uh, this is just Kenya and Africa is a, a real big place, man. It really is when you think about it. 
Well, this is a Uganda over here. This is Kenya over here. We know we have William, I mean William. We have uh, Leonard working in uh, Kenya, and we have uh, my the brother Joseph working in Kenya. And this is another brother that I've been really uh, trying to get to know, and he's been sending me his uh, newsletters all the time from uh, from the GF Praise Report uh, over in Kenya. And so he wrote me uh, Sunday and sent me this newsletter, and I just want to share some of it with you guys. It says here, warm greetings and love from your families and ministry in Africa through our Lord and King Yeshua, uh, Jesus Christ. And thank you very much for your continued prayers for his work. Sunday service at this church they went to. Water baptism took stage in the morning from 9 a.m. Uh, baptizing new 27 Christians saved through the evangelism programs. The San Diego Institute students coronator invited the speaker of the day, followed by the dedication of the children in which uh, Jizu, BBB, I can't say these words, too, was consecrated to the Lord. And this Kia Shia, I'm trying to get some information on this little town. <clears throat> Our church building looked small on Sunday as we hosted over 120 attendants. The work done is all by his Holy Spirit, by praise, honor, and power to him and our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Salvation, door-to-door -door evangelism, fixed, he said, door-to-door -door evangelism, fixed uh, 313 people. Open-air gospel crusade, brought in 56 people that gave their lives to Christ. Night revival sections, gave 12 people who gave their lives to Christ. All glory be to God forever. And uh, miracle healing and deliverance, all glory to our Father. 39 got delivered from demonic possession. Two big witchcraft snakes died. Eight women got healed from stomach complications. 11 got healed from leg pains and diseases. Four got healed from eye problems. 23 was prayed for marital, marital problems. Uh, two insane. You hear? See how big that number is, 23? We have a big marital problem in the world today because Yeshua... Uh, you know, I mean, Satan tried to destroy Yeshua's people. He want to break down the marriages. He want to, he want to have people say, oh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a male. I, I'm, I'm a female. You know, he want to break down this, these barriers of, of demonic pressure on our families, on our marriages. So we have to really pray over our marriages constantly, people. Two insane people was prayed for and started helping with the little church assignments. Two were prayed for healing from diabetes. 21 was prayed for concerning witchcraft and demonic tormenting. A lot of testimonies coming in. And you know, I myself pray a uh, uh, witchcraft prayer every single night over our families, the ministries, you guys out there. Because you know, we do. We have all these witches and demonic spirits and witches making. Um, here's my prayer right here. If you want a copy of it, you can just write me for it. Uh, coming from uh, Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez. Fernandes. Yeah, he has a, a prayer that I really like. Uh, but you know, really, we need to pray against these uh, networkings of witchcraft spirits all around. And we need to do it every night and every, every night. Every night I do it around midnight usually. But anyway, uh, he's, he's talking about that as well. You see here, um, open air gospel crusade and revival. They had a revival. His praises and glory is still in the air around this town, Kitabishi. I can't never say it. As many experienced life change during the nine days of outreach. The 82 students from Senior Law requested to use our Kitabishi Church as a camp. Uh, with many prayers and fastings, they moved out every morning, divided themselves in groups of four. Man, you know, you can't hardly get people over in America to go out and do street evangelism anymore. It's just absolutely not going on too much. Uh, raided the area with the gospel of Yeshua Christ. They visited one 502 houses, people. They visited 502 homes. 313 got saved in the morning, door-to-door -door evangelism. That is awesome. That is what I used to be a part of when I was in my 20s. And I used to love it, going door-to-door, -door, knocking on doors, meeting people as they are, and and, and selling by taking them Bibles and praying with them and uh, leading them to salvation. It was just a wonderful experience. And so uh, I'm not going to read all this, but I just wanted to go over some of these things they are doing. I think he had sent some pictures here. Let me see if I could pull them up real quick. Uh, but I'm just so happy for all the work being done in Kenya and Africa, all the nations around the world in India. Uh, we need see that's the bat. They're getting baptized here. The little baptismal. Uh, well, I haven't seen one of those in years. A little baptismal thing in the ground like that. I haven't seen one of those since my grandmother's church years and years ago. Uh, wow. So 
Uh, that is really amazing. I, I had told him I was going to share his uh, video, his stuff today. I'm not going to open up any live videos here, but I'm going to put the links in the description box and you guys can look at it if you want to later. Uh, but man, uh, they always uh, just gathering where they can, you know, to, to worship the Lord. And uh, one day, a lot of these people, we need to go and talk to the world and preach the gospel because one of them, one day, they'll come out of, they'll come out of this uh, sun god worship. A lot of them just don't know people. We just don't know. I hear a lot of people tell me right now who do know, and they still say, well, it's to tradition. It's to tradition. This is what I'm used to. Well, you know, sometimes we need to get unused to things and do the right thing because you sure know, um, I know the Sabbath has not been changed. And I was listening to Chuck Mishler was talking on that. I think I posted that link on one of my videos. And he was going from line by line, precept by precept, like Father showed me years and years ago, that the Sabbath remains, okay? It's one of the moral commandments. The fourth, It's the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. And it has not been done away with, okay? None of it, it has. The Roman Catholic Church came in and tried to change that, okay? And did change it, actually. But you know what I mean. Uh, so let's go over here to uh, Roger right now. And I'm going to play this. And I hope that I don't have to mute this out. But I know I may have to try to mute it out. Uh, cause I
Okay, people, I just want to show some, kind of cut some of the time off that, but just giving Bibles out over in part somewhere in India. Um, well, I've been knowing Roger for many, many years now, almost six years or more, six years, I think, for when I first met him on a social media site. Uh, what was that site called? Living in Black and White. They don't even have it around anymore, I don't think. Uh, Labar, L-I-B-A-W. And wow, I'm so happy Yeshua showed me him because he's doing a mighty, mighty work today in India, working through Bob, Feed My Sheep. Uh, so much. Thank you so much, Bob Barber, for all you're doing out there for the people all over the world. Uh, so let's go over here and get to no, uh, get to my feature uh, speaking for the day. I wanted to share with you guys Randall J. Brewer. And then I'm going to get off of here. I'm just going to share Randall. Uh, you know, it's all these things I've been showing you today already. We know that we're going to be having an opportunity come where we're going to have to stand for Yeshua and and and, uh, and just work with him uh, uh, faithfully. Uh, we can't let the world tell us what to do. We can't let governments tell us what to do. We can't let people tell us what to do. Men tell us what to do. We need to learn how to follow Yeshua only and stand for him. So let's go and read here and see what Randall is saying here. Living by faith. The purpose of your life is to please God and bring him glory in everything you do. Spending time alone with him brings great pleasure to his heart. He is also well pleased when you do the, those things that bring about spiritual growth. He is especially pleased when you take up your cross and follow him. When you take on responsibility of fulfilling your heavenly call, there is, however, one thing that pleases God more than anything else. The frosting on the cake of spiritual growth and maturity is to walk by faith on a daily basis. Okay, what did I say? Did I say once in a while? Is it once a week? Is it once a month? Is it when you feel like it? It's once on a daily basis. Uh, faith is the foundation spiritual growth is built on. So important is that Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Living by faith is the only lifestyle that pleases God in Romans 1, 17 says, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. The Amplified Bible says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed in a way that awakens more faith as it is written and forever remains written the just and the unjust shall live by faith live by faith the apostle paul was used by god in a powerful way the words anointed him to write uh the words anointed him to write uh the backbone of the go of the gospel message still everything paul said and did would have been of low value if he didn't make living by faith his daily lifestyle he knew how important faith is and wrote in Galatians 20 to 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Faith is important to God. It was important to Paul, but and it needs to be equally important to you as well. You can't grow up without faith and you certainly can't please God without it because you can grow before you can grow. I'm sorry. You need to understand that faith is not a doctrine you learn in some Sunday school class. Faith is a lifestyle, a way of life. It's what dominates your thoughts, words, and actions. It's how you deal successfully with all the situations that rise up in your life. You live by faith because that's how God lives. A child of God always mimics what they see their father do. Hallelujah. We need to mimic Yeshua. We need to walk with him. We need to talk with him. We need to have a relationship with him. God is a God of faith, which means you should be a person of faith also. Back when time began, as man knows it, God used faith to create the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are vis visible. How did all this happen? Psalms 33, 9 says, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Imagine you being able to do the same thing. 
It can happen if you grow up spiritually and learn to live by faith. You have been ordained by God to live the same way he does. You have been commanded to follow his example in everything you do. Jesus said in John 8, 29, I always do those things that please him. Since it takes faith to please the father, this means that Jesus lived by faith all the days of his life. Paul had a deep conviction that he had to follow Christ's example and live by faith also. He then turns around and tells you to do the same thing. He writes in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. How are you to live from faith to faith? How are, we, how are we to live from faith to faith? Daily, 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 like he said. I Amos 3, 3 asks the question, can two walk together unless they are agreed? How can you and Jesus walk together unless you both agreed on where you are going and how to get there? Jesus says faith is the vehicle that will take you to the fulfillment of your destiny. And you must be in agreement with that. Jesus lived by faith and you also must make the same commitment to live by faith. God says the just shall live by faith, Hebrews 10, 38. This is not optional. It is mandatory that you walk by faith, not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Living by faith is the only way you can please God. He'll accept no substitute. In fact, you can't even approach God unless you first have faith and believe he exists. Hebrews eleven six says you must believe that he is. Again, Faith is not optionable. Do we get that, people? It's not optionable. Okay. There is no alternative. You must believe. You must live by faith. You can't come half help, help step into even salvation. If you don't totally believe that he died on the cross for you and rose again, and you totally come to him, as it says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, if, if you don't totally believe that, I'm sure nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to happen for you. I've heard a lot of people say, I've tried to come to Christ. I tried to come to Christ and it just didn't seem to work. But I know one lady specifically was talking about how she came to Christ by full time. And when she came the last time, it worked because she gave it all. She gave all of it, not part of it. You can't get part. You can't be half pregnant. You Either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. You have to come to Yeshua totally, as he's saying here. Randall is saying here, expressing this. You have to come to him totally. So it says here, um, uh, living by faith is the only way to live. It's the victory uh, that has overcome the world. 1 John 5, 4, the message Bible says, the conquering power that brings the world to his knees is our faith. It pleases God when you live by faith, for it's what, it's what gives you access to all the blessings he has provided for you through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Faith is the hand that receives all that God has given. It pleases him when you are blessed, when you partake of all the riches of his goodness. He smiles when all your needs are met and you walk in divine health. If you want God's best in your life, if you want to make him happy, then make the decision to live by faith. Allow faith to be in the fabric of who you are. The DNA of what makes you the person God created you to be. Walk in faith, talk in faith, act in faith. So important it is that Romans 14, 23 says, whatever is not from sin, faith, whatever is not from faith is sin. If the way you live isn't consistent with what you believe, if you are not living by faith, then your life is going in the wrong direction. Put your life in the hands of Jesus and he'll take you down the road you should be on. He'll take you down the road of faith. If you're not living by faith, you're not pleasing God. If you're not believing for things you cannot see, you're not making him happy. Galatians 2.21 says, if you don't live by faith, you'll frustrate the grace of God. But remember, living by faith is a way of life. It's what you do. It should be as natural to you as breathing. It should be something you do without even thinking about it. Absolutely. Absolutely, people. I've learned to live my life that way. You know, I, I get up I mean, the nighttime. I say, Father, what is it you want me to go read? What is it you want me to go say today? He just said, oh, go read. Go over to Isaiah so-and-so. Go over to Matthew. Go over here. You know, and I'm used to it. I'm used to being with that in that relationship. And he just give it to me every night, every night, every night. I'm expecting it every night. And he gives it to me every day and every night, people. We need to learn to know it's automatic. Absolutely. Automatic once you start walking with him, talking with him, uh, trusting in him. Okay. Automatic, automatic. God requires you to walk in faith because it's the conquering force that causes you to succeed in life. 
Faith contains the power of God that transformed darkness into light, bad into good. There is nothing you can do in the natural to bring these changes into your life. They come through faith and faith alone. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The message Bible says the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. I love it so much. And this just make me think about a, a short testimony. I've told you guys many times before. I don't know if I'll be able to read all this on faith today, but I'm going to uh, share this short testimony because, um, it is so amazing to me. It's what you don't see, as he said here, what you don't see. Uh, uh, I know I told you guys once I was uh, I was working as a nurse at the time. Uh, I was working as a, 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 what do you call it, nurse? Oh, they call it something else. I can't even call it now. Let's go so many years ago now. But I was working as a certified, okay, a certified nurse assistant. And uh, this lady I, I take care of, I always go and take care of her and and we really had developed a good relationship. And, and then her daughter, her daughter called me and said, Marner, uh, you can come in tomorrow one more time, but we're going to move. We're leaving. We're moving. And I said, no, Father, we can't be moving that quick. I don't get paid till I don't get paid till the end of the month. And I mean, I don't get paid to now. And the lady leaving because she had did me, did me a favor. I was like shot on gas one day. And she just said, Marner, here, here's $20. Just take it, you know. And she said, uh, you, you can give it back whenever, honey. And I said, sure. And I give it back. And so they was leaving and moving. And I'm like, father, they moving, they leaving. I, I'm like, I need to give that lady $20 back, father. She's leaving. She's moving. I said, what I'm going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. And I prayed at night and I just said, I really need $20 right now. I really need it right now. I got up the next morning, people. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. I got up the next morning, I grabbed my pocketbook, $20 bill sitting right on top of my pocketbook, $20 bill just sitting there. And I know nobody did it, but the angels of God sent it there and put it there because my, my roommate didn't know nothing about it. Nobody knew about it except me and God. Nobody knew nothing else about it. Okay. And, uh, and I didn't talk about it with nobody, but, but the Lord. And so it was sitting there right on top of my purse that morning. I was just like, wow, thank you, father. I needed this right now. I wanted it right now. I know when I was visiting my grandson one time, I wanted to take him a little gift and I didn't have no money on me. And I go outside, get in the car and the leaves are flying around in the wind that day. And here's flying a $5 bill, flying dollar bill right by my leg as I get in the car. And so I know it's those, those things that we don't see, those things that we don't see, but those things that we believe. And as we ask, he said to ask and it will be given. I know many times on the channel, I need money to come in right now, money to come in. And I don't have any in the cup. And I go and look at, uh, we go look at the, um, I go look at my PayPal account on my email later that night. And there it is. Somebody send the offering in. You know, we have to live by faith, people. We have to live by faith. It's all about faith. Okay. Faith alone. I'm going to have to come back and read this other stuff here another time, but I will absolutely, I got two messages I got to come back and read because uh, time is going uh, 40 minutes already and I'm going to just end this right now, but I will come back and uh, read some more of this faith thing. I'm absolutely going to do that. I love faith. It's one of my important, I love talking about faith and, and sharing testimonies about faith. I love it. So I definitely will come back and uh, finish this Living by Faith by Randall Day Brewer. And now I'm going to go over here and close out uh, Maranatha here. Let me see. I make sure I get some of this stuff off here. Um, okay, I can take that off. Okay, let me go over here and pull this up real quick. <clears throat> and I hope everything works out today and doesn't, you know, go crazy on me today with the audio and stuff. So let's go over here to July 10th and close this out. Okay, martyrs in the last days. Uh, really listen carefully to this message, okay, this, uh, this audio. I'm going to uh, mute it out and let you guys listen to this. Okay, I don't need that. I need the uh, got the wrong button here.
July 10, Martyrs in the Last Days. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. John 16, 2. Every individual in our world will be arrayed under one of two banners. The two armies will stand distinct and separate, and this distinction will be so marked that many who shall be convinced of the truth will come on the side of God's commandment-keeping people. When this grand work is to take place in the battle, Prior to the last closing conflict, many will be imprisoned, many will flee for their lives from cities and towns, and many will be martyrs for Christ's sake in standing in defense of the truth. By the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God, our nation, the United States, will disconnect herself fully from righteousness. As the approach of the Roman armies was assigned to the disciples of the impending destruction of Jerusalem, so may this apostasy be assigned to us that the limit of God's forbearance is reached, that the measure of our nation's iniquity is full, and that the angel of mercy is about to take her flight never to return. The people of God will then be plunged into those scenes of affliction and distress which prophets have described as the time of Jacob's trouble. The cries of the faithful persecuted ones ascend to heaven. And as the blood of Abel cried from the ground, there are voices also cry, crying to God from martyrs' graves, from the sepulchres of the sea, from mountain caverns, from convent vaults. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? When the fifth seal was opened, John the Revelator in vision saw beneath the altar the company that were slain for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. After this came the scenes described in the 18th of Revelation when those who are faithful and true are called out from Babylon. Christ will restore the life taken, for he is the life giver. He will beautify the righteous with immortal life. July 11, the sh Okay. All right, people. I really appreciate you guys listening today. Um, wow, it's so much to keep looking at and keep learning and keep growing, but we know we're going to be out of here one of these days. It'll be over, over in an instant, people, over in an instant. So keep your uh, lamps trimmed and burning. Uh, we really appreciate all the offerings coming in for all these purposes of, uh, self, uh, contributions, I mean, coming in. For worldwide ministries, uh, local ministries, for homeless people, for the fatherless, the motherless, uh, materials, equipment we need, and things of this nature. Uh, one day I'm probably going to have to get a new computer. I'm trying not to hold on. I'm trying not to do it right now, but uh, I'd rather see somebody uh, having a, a blanket on their bed, a Bible in their hand, a, a food to eat, and shelter. Uh, but, you know, we, we do what we can here, and all your givings help many people world, worldwide for food, personal needs, and equipment to help us continue this online ministry. When you give, you help missionaries win souls for the kingdom of Yahweh. We all need each other. We definitely need each other to help souls enter the kingdom. You will be blessed from our Father. Thank you. Thank you. Give us for all your present contribution. Father, thank you for this feast time. We thank you for these unleavened uh, bread days of uh, passing uh we uh really appreciate your being our passover lamb you are absolutely our elohim our great elohim and so we ask that you uh be with the people watching today be with each and every one of them uh be with all the names in the prayer box today each and every one of them uh we ask that you would be over the dope horses father uh we ask that you would assign the households with angels to in and out uh, keeping them close to your bosom, Father. We know time's gonna get rough, but we know you will be with us all through the all through to the end. You said you would never leave us or forsake us, and you will be with us until the end. So we just thank you so much for being our Father, our, our God, our, our everything, Father, our um, counselor, our, our judge, our lawyer, uh, you know, our healer, 
Uh, we really appreciate you so much, Father, in our life. I know I appreciate you so much in my life. I just ask that you would be with all the people today, uh, supplying their needs according to your riches and glory in Yeshua HaMashiach, whether it be physical, mentally, spiritually. Uh, we ask that you continually to bless the people, Father, whatever they needs, uh, uh, meeting their needs, whatever they may be, Father. A lot of people in sickness, disease, a lot of people need jobs, a lot of people need husband and wives, a lot of people looking for their life, life term, long-term mate. Uh, we know a lot of people out there in drugs and alcohol. We know a lot of people out there need to break some of these uh fleshly uh uh endeavors that take over our life father uh we ask that you be with each and every one of them father helping them to know you are the only one who can save them father hallelujah hallelujah so we just thank you for uh, your care for us we bind satan and all his evil angels below beyond beneath mentioned and unmentioned known and unknown we bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way and we ask that your holy spirit be over your people, Father. Lead them to the cross where they won't be lost. Hallelujah. So, Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your care. And we know that we will win in the end. You, We have already won the race. And we need to just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Help us to keep holding on, Father, till you come. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. Shalom, shalom. People, I'm going to go now. And you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Uh, uh, enjoy the rest of these uh, unleavened. Uh, dead, I think, sunset tonight, or is it sunset tonight? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Dawn to dawn. You say tomorrow morning, I don't know, dawn to dawn. But anyway, tonight, sunset, I'm used to. Anyway, guys, you guys be blessed, okay? I, I love you. I thank you so much for all you do. Shalom, shalom. Love you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Shabbat shalom.